there are some people who are worried that, yes, I'm willing to participate in this whole program. Right. But what is government's commitment to this program as well? Because in terms of burden sharing, mm -hmm. they don't see that. They feel that I put into government's bond. You come, the bank's convinced me, and I'm being punished now. So the question is, is it a burden sharing or the yes. sense of punishment um, that it is? Um, George, we are in an economic crisis, so we all need to um, change the way in which we govern ourselves or that we have expenditures. Um, and I think it was very clear in the budget uh, that we uh, announced in November, uh, which talked about the issue of now managing the budget on a commitment basis and the quarterly allocations that then tightens the way expenditure occurs uh, in each of our ministries. That is one. Uh, clearly, we went ahead for the salary reductions and 30% reduction in discretionary um, spending. Um, and that certainly is um, what the ministry would ensure um, occurs um, going, going forward. Um, can we do more? Yes, we can. I mean, uh, we set up a program to review um, all of the flagship programs to make sure that there's efficiency in there. But I think we shouldn't be too hasty um, to talk about, um, you know, uh, eliminating all programs. And we do talk about school feeding, we talk about senior high school, and there are some very emotional issues um, about that. And certainly efficiencies are important. But fundamentally, uh, George, I mean, every citizen has a right to be well educated. I believe so. The question is whether that's a citizen's right or is a parents and citizens. We may need to find a way, you know, um, to, to evaluate uh, whether people have enough resources and therefore to be able to take care of their kids um, in senior high school. Do you think that we've gotten there that we should look at the evaluation of the program itself? Yeah, the evaluation, uh, as I mentioned, all of the flagships are being evaluated for us to then make a decided view as to how we will go. Um, but let's not um, throw um, the baby out, you know, um, um, in, this, in this period of austerity as to the human capital and social mobility that is required. So we, we have to be careful and cautious about that. Um, but certainly issues of efficiency, uh, make sure that um, the food um, that is purchased is appropriate and well-priced, making sure procurements are well done. You know, that uh, we are onto that, um, to make sure we do that. Um, and then um, talk about um, uh, ministries and um, state-owned enterprises, um, what the chief executives are paid, uh, how we cap that uh, and bring more uh, a sense of performance mm, as opposed to the certainty of their incomes, etc. Those are all issues that we have to really look hard at and ask ourselves whether we can support that. And I don't think we can and therefore SIGA and the Minister of um, uh, Public um, um, Affairs will have to really look look at that um, to to ensure that we get through cocoa board, etc. Because if you look at um, um, the reason why the fund is using 105 um, percent debt to GDP, it's because of the performance of these SOEs, uh, which used to be independent. And so now they've added Cocoa Board and all other SOEs, or else would have been at about 76% if just central government was what was regarded. Uh, but analysis used general government, and that is what ballooned, ballooned the debt to equity ratio. So clearly, it's incumbent of us to look at these SOEs and to look at the MDAs, ensure these commitment bases are followed, and quarterly allocations are done. And, and we ourselves, as uh, ministers, etc., you know, um, signaling, you know, um, reducing the usage of these V8s uh, into salon cars, uh, watching our petrol, etc. Those are all, it may um, sound like it's not much, but it's important signaling for the citizen yeah. to show yeah. that burden sharing yeah. is occurring. Yeah. 
and, and, and we um, here at the Ministry of Finance in terms of fiscal rectitude are very clear on the lifestyles that uh, we must lead as leaders and how we then manage our ministries to make sure that there's no excessive expenditure. Again, it, it comes back to some people trying to quantify these uh, measures mm -hmm. that you've already taken in the budget. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they see that it is still not enough and maybe looking at the challenge that we are in, mm -hmm. a lot can be done. The issues about ministers being moved around is the prerogative of the president. But when it comes to the expenditure of the ministry's agencies, mm -hmm. so I would say the ball is in your courts. There it can is. be further squeeze as well to demonstrate yeah. our commitment and to share the burden mm -hmm. because then some are saying that the alternative to this debt exchange program, yeah. a partial one, is also government taking some cuts as well. It's More true. aggressive I mean, cuts. George, if you look at, I think we have a 2 to 3% um, GDP reduction in expenditure, if you, if you look at, at that. And then, um, as I mentioned, um, expenditures are going to be based on commitment basis. So don't go ahead of yourself and, you know, um, transact um, certain expenditures, that would not even, even get through the give me system. Uh, because if your budget is not there, you can then post request for that. So that we've now been able to integrate the HRMIS of give me, and that will help forestall um, ministers or officers, you know, giving contracts that really the budget can support so that we get into these areas and liabilities. And that's important, and we are going to insist on those things. Um, so really, on our part, uh, as a ministry, and the oversight that we are now putting in place, um, the type of letters that have already gone out, I think we're going to see a very, very different year mm -hmm. um, for our management of mm -hmm. fiscal rectitude. I, I get the austerity that is being championed, but some will look at your budget deficit as well and ask that, they don't get that sense of austerity in government because if you're going mm -hmm. to spend more about 60 or 61 billion, I stand mm -hmm. to be correct, mm -hmm. that sense of austerity is not being lead by the government. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Ministry of Finance is doing it, but yeah. the government as an entity, yeah. the government as a company, yeah. I'm not feeling that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you look at um, all of the MMDAs and the programs that we, we need to support. They are real livelihoods at the end of the day. Um, this whole outcry um, that we hear from, uh, from bondholders, uh, it's because it's partly uh, the issue of whether people are getting appropriate decent wages and salaries for what they do. And even though I would admit it's not decent, the quantum in the end ends up being quite um, significant um, for a percentage of revenue that we have. And that becomes an issue. So how much more can you cut? I mean, if you were to talk to any ministry, I mean, they will be uh, tell you that they are bored at the goods and services that we have allocated to them um, this year as opposed to the previous year. And all of those things, you know, have seen um, quite a bit of cut. I'm expecting that um, with the exchange program, uh, we'll hopefully then be able to reduce um, the expenditures um, in our interest um, charges and that would really bring our deficit um, to controllable limits because we need to still move towards um, the under 5% in the FRA. Can we cut more? Can we cut more? We will certainly look during the year to be able to adjust, you know, as, as we get the benefits of the debt program and see, but you can have government come into a halt, okay? And that's important, uh, work must go on. Um, and you can't um, do an austerity program and not be conscious um, of social protection that we have to do, but that has to be done efficiently. Uh, but certainly um, we have a team that is going to continue to be vigilant uh, about what MMD is spent. Is there an alternative to this debt exchange program? Um, what do we have? Um, essentially, if we look at, you know, globally, you can't have a situation where you are paying 20, 25% interest um, on government issuance and believe that you can, you know, make progress of your macros. 
So we have to do something with the debt program. First, we have our fiscal adjustments, uh, macro plans, structural changes. You then need a debt program to really get you off um, this um, 102 percent or 5 percent down to 55 over this landing zone of 2028. We have to get there to reduce that debt. And therefore, between domestic, uh, between Paris Club, and between external bondholders, is what to achieve that. In that period, also then manage your inflation and foreign exchange stability so that you then come to an even keel which will enable us to grow as we are growing. But even in this period of austerity, um, it's therefore a push. As you saw about five weeks ago, uh, we launched some thousand hectares of rice farming, yeah. etc. So that the real economy is not forgotten um, in, this, in this space mm -hmm. because that's what is going to create uh, the jobs and, and wealth that is required to go on. So we have to parallel run and um, um, through all of the nation's um, acknowledgement of where we are and where we want to go, I expect that we'll do this successfully.